Welcome to Module 8 of the WetWorks Clearinghouse WWC Group Design Standards Training. This module focuses on studies that assign clusters or groups to conditions instead of individuals and are eligible for review using group design standards. Studies with cluster level assignment, which we will call cluster studies, have become increasingly common in education research. The structure of these types of studies requires a special application of the WWC group design standards. This module builds upon the standards discussed in earlier modules, applying concepts like attrition and baseline equivalence to cluster studies. On the slides, some words are underlined and in bold. Definitions for these terms are in the glossary, which is available on the WWC website, whatworks.ed.gov. This module is part of a group of nine training modules designed to help prepare you to take the certification test for the WWC Group Design Standards. You can access the certification test along with the training modules using the additional training and certification link on the homepage of the online training site. If you haven't already done so, please view the introduction video before viewing this module. The introduction reviews important background information about this training and describes accompanying resources. You can access all of the resources mentioned in this module through the WWC's website, whatworks.ed.gov. Earlier modules focused on how to use the WWC Group Design Standards to review randomized control trials, or RCTs, and quasi-experimental designs, or QEDs, that assign individuals to conditions. In this module, we will talk about how the WWC uses the standards to review cluster studies. Cluster studies are those that assign clusters or groups to conditions instead of individuals. Examples of clusters include classrooms, schools, or districts. We'll cover how the WWC determines whether a study uses cluster level assignment. We'll also discuss how changes to the composition of individuals within clusters after random assignment can affect the rating of cluster RCTs. Finally, we'll describe the standards the WWC uses to review cluster assignment studies. There are many reasons a researcher might assign clusters to conditions rather than individuals, such as students. For example, the intervention may be implemented at the cluster level, such as a whole school reform model, or a classroom curriculum. In such cases, all students within a cluster receive the intervention, so it is not possible to form a comparison group from within the cluster. To be considered a cluster-level assignment study, a study must meet two conditions. First, individuals must be assigned to the intervention or comparison condition as groups. For example, a cluster study could assign schools or classrooms to conditions because both represent groups of students. Second, the data the study analyzes must be based on individuals within clusters. For example, imagine a district wants to test how a new curriculum impacts student achievement. Researchers assign schools to either an intervention group that implements the new curriculum or a comparison group that continues teaching the old curriculum. If the study then compares student achievement in the intervention and comparison group schools, the study would be considered a cluster study. The particular methods used to aggregate and analyze data, including the unit of analysis, do not affect whether the study is eligible for review as a cluster-level assignment study. For example, a study could either analyze individual student test scores or aggregate the data to analyze the average achievement of schools. Both of these analysis methods are ultimately based on achievement data for students within schools. As long as the study assigned clusters to conditions and the data are ultimately based on individuals within those clusters, it is a cluster study. It's time for a first knowledge check. A study assigned teachers to conditions and examined student achievement outcomes. The study analyzed data aggregated to the classroom level. This study may be eligible for review as a. An individual level assignment group design study. B. A cluster level assignment group design study. The answer is B. First, the unit of assignment, the teacher, groups individuals within clusters. By assigning teachers to conditions, the study also assigns each teacher's students to conditions as a group. 
Second, the data for the analysis are based on students within clusters. So, the study meets both eligibility criteria for cluster study. Knowledge Check 2. A study assigned teachers to conditions and examined the effect of an intervention on teacher retention. This study may be eligible for review as A. An individual level assignment group design study B. A cluster level assignment group design study The correct answer is A. Teachers are the unit of assignment and the data for the analysis are based on teachers, so the study is eligible for review as an individual level group design study. Choice B is incorrect because the data for the analysis are not based on individuals within clusters. Specifically, the teachers in this example are the individuals being studied, and teachers were assigned to conditions as individuals, so the study does not meet one of the eligibility criteria for cluster studies.